Good morning and this is Plus TV Africa of the press this morning and of the press we have the papers with us, The Punch, The Nation, This Day newspaper and The Vanguard will be reviewing the headlines, the major stories in the headlines this morning and get into in-depth analysis. Joining me on this this morning of, on of the press is Femi Johnson, head of news at Plus TV Africa. Good morning Femi. Good morning Benny. And good to have you with me here this morning. Thanks for having me. Let's go into the headlines this morning. We start off with the Punch newspaper, the first headline in the Punch newspaper. Customs generate 1.34 trillion naira, surpass revenue target by 403 billion naira. And that you'll find on page 27 in the Punch newspaper this morning. Banks deposits with CBN hit 3.17 trillion naira in nine months. Bribery thrives in NMIC. Officials flees UTME candidates' orders. And that's on page two in the Punch newspaper. Embrace Ipis. Bohari Ajis Asu promises better funding. Page nine in the Punch newspaper. And one of the biggest headlines across the, the national dailies this morning is the Amotekun. Amotekun starts on shaky ground. Three governors absent from launch. Bad weather stop Ogun. Lagos governors Akiro Dulu says. And zone rolls out 120 patrol vans. Mackinder Orgy's unity. Still in the punch this morning, Ekiti Vasari recalls 363 workers as Exot begins strike on Monday. Flight delays increase as Hamatan hazes heat airport and cattle thieves clash with youths killed 12 in Plateau villages. Obasanjo Abiodo in closed door meetings, details unknown. Policeman slit my throat after knocking me down, says a decorator. A minimum wage, TUC gives states January 31 ultimatum. Now let's put on the biggest news in the Punch newspaper this morning, which is the Amotekun starts on shaky ground. Three governors from the Southwest were, were absent, and one of the biggest governors, one of the biggest states um, in the Southwest, which happens to be Lagos, yeah, yeah, uh, Governor Jide Saonlu was not present, I'm blaming the reason for it's not being able to make it, um, it, couldn't, it couldn't secure a flight because of hazy weather. But firstly, I want to ask you, Femi, what is your take on the whole holistically of Amotekun as it is right now? Okay, Benny, let me start with the word Amotekun. Mm, yeah. The word Amotekun is the Yoruba name for Leopard. You know, it's the code name for this operation. Yes. And it, it seems to me we have a situation now that the Southwest governors are now beginning to realize that, okay, they are the chief security officers of their state. Yes. And there's a need to take responsibility for either security or the insecurity in that area. Yes. Now, if you check in the last one or two years, you've had series of attacks in that axis, in that region. There was a case of a professor, you know, who lectures at OAU and who was kidnapped. Uh, band, bandit attacks, ex men. Now it's becoming a serious call, you know, concern for the governors. Yes. And now they just discover they can't sit back there and watch these things taking place. For those people who are from that region, you know, in the last December we had a case where people could not travel because of the insecurity in that existing check yes. Lagos, Ibadan Expressway, down to Oyo State, Ogun State. So the governors now feel they need to come together and create what we'll call a joint patrol whereby each state is expected to provide the logistics and the vehicles that are expected for this patrol. If you ask me, my own opinion is insecurity has no boundary. Okay. Insecurity has no, has, has no tribe. The point is there's a problem and there's a need to solve this problem. Yes. And these governors have devised this means to solve this problem. Now we've had a situation where people cannot drive on the access, you know, and that's why governors, Lagos governor, or your state, they are coming together to, 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 you know, to create the scheme. I'm not going to hold brief for the Lagos state governor for not Ogun being state governor and Oshun Oshun Oshun, state. You know, yes, the, they were supposed to be there. I'm not their spokesperson. So, but what I would just say is, what is more important is, is there a problem and is there a need? And that's what we should focus on. And I think that is what is taking place at the and moment. And so you don't think that the absence of these three governors, because th those are key states also in the Southwest, not being present at the launch of the Amotekun doesn't cast any shadow of doubt to say this. Um, they probably are not in tandem with what, what Amotekun represents. Ideally, they are, they are expected to, okay. to be there. But in this situation, the deed is done. They, are, they were in there. But the truth is, this scheme has been launched yesterday. And so I'm expecting a situation whereby it's a time we need to collaborate. It's, an, it's not a time to divide or for a time for division. Yes. In the past, we've had, it's just similar to what you have in the North. 
where you've had the issue of insurgency, yes. Boko Haram and all that, and you have civilian JTF. It's like a collaborative effort. Like what the governor of Ekiti State said, is not an option to the police. Yeah, I was just going to come to that. It's like, is, 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 yeah. is this uh, more like complementary to the effort yeah, of the police? Yeah, complementary effort. People like the fact that if if the police force was up to par in doing its duty, that this would not be necessary. And uh, so, because at the end of the day, Amota Kuhn is like um, practically providing the, the the protection of life and property that the Nigerian police is supposed to provide for its citizenry. So, do uh, you think it's failed on the Nigerian police? I agree with you because yeah. there's a vacuum. Yes, in terms of security there's a vacuum and if that vacuum is there we have a station how many policemen do you have in nigeria we just have a little over 300,000 policemen and if you look at the population of nigeria and our landmass that would be a big tax for the police yes. and that's why there's a need for an alternative or like a, a, another scheme to collaborate the effort of the police and that's why this is coming up so that at least it will be able to fill that vacuum yeah. like i said Nobody cares what is going on as long as there's security of lives and property then. And, and I think we've gone to an era where the security system in Nigeria needs to be decentralized. Where we don't have to rely on Abuja or the IG for everything. State policing. State policing. Which it's been, they've been clamoring for this for quite yeah, a while and, right now. And, so and so is this, it safe to assume that Amoteku is some sort of state policy yeah, it's put in sim place? It's similar to that. Okay. You know, it's more of a combination of community policing, state policing, regional policing, so that at least we can achieve better results. Yeah. Okay, and then one want to ask, just when we thought that there were no more reprisal attacks in Plateau State, and there, there's, been, there's been serious attacks lately in Plateau State, and people are wondering if other, if other geopolitical zones would, would take cue from what the Southwest has just done to ex also establish their own security outfits. Do you see that happening at all? Well, I, I, it might likely happen okay. uh, because we have a station now because I, as, according to reports, some of the northern, you know, uh, uh, people from the north, they are also having their own kind of deliberations. Like some people kick the gate, that's that of the southwest. Mm -hmm. You know, an example of this in the, in the north is that of the uh, civilian JTF, JTF. Which, which is similar to this. Yeah. And so, it's possible, you know, because there's a need for us to have what we call community policing because you need to understand that it is necessary. Those people live in that community. They provide what we call intelligence. Now, if you and I live in the same area, there's standards for us to be familiar with the terrain, yes. understand what is going on in that area, and whoever is fomenting trouble in that area, there's tendency you know them. So they are in position to provide information, intelligence report for the police. What I'm expecting is a situation, a situation whereby, because there are reports that, you know, some people from the police authority are not happy with this, and that has not been confirmed already. Okay. But we must understand that there is a need for us to decentralize the police system, whereby it becomes more effective than the way it used to be. Like I said, the population in Nigeria is growing to almost 200 million, and if you just have over 300,000 policemen to 200 million Nigerians, which half of them are attached to the VIPs, All right. so now, there's going to be a shortfall. Yeah, there's also a concern about who regulates the activities of the Amotekun, you know, because I'm trying to recall there, there was an incident um, in, in the East where there was, there was a group like this, a vigilante group like this. Um, they became political uh, mercenaries. People were using them to, to settle scores. scores. And so who regulates the activities of the Amotekun? What is their boundaries? And what do they get into? And what, do they get, what don't they get into to decipher the activities of the Nigerian police from the Amotekun? Okay, you, the Joint Patrol Team is being headed by a military officer. Okay. So to start with, so what it means is whatever the hunters, the OPC members, whatever they need to do, they have to get directives from them. Like I said, they are providing a kind of collaborative effort. So what it means is if a victim or... Collaborative effort, not, not necessarily a duplication of effort. Not yeah, duplication I mean. of effort. So what it means is because it's, the, it's still constitutional, it's still the duty of the police, police yes. to provide internal security. So what it means in this situation is if OPC arrests anybody, they still have to hand over to the police. It's like a collaborative thing Every because they have what we call the native intelligence. The OPC members and the hunters, they have what we call native intelligence. There's our, there was a case in the Ekiti State, which uh, I think it was a former governor that raised that alarm in the first place, where some herdsmen and some bandits invaded the state 
and how to wire the service of hunters. So it was because of that, this, this, this emanated from that. Yes. And if you have a situation like this, I'm also expecting the governors to rise up to their responsibility because for leadership, there's what we call element of control. I accept, yeah. I understand the fact that, which is natural, there's bound to be abuse, there's bound to be element of, you know, but we just need to ensure that, and the governors, I mean, needs to ensure that this scheme, the purpose for which is being created, is being achieved. All right, then we'll look at the nation. The headlines in the nation newspaper this morning, our ordeal at NEEN offices by applicants, JAM, come to CBT centers, page 41, in the nation newspaper this morning, Nigeria's widest circulating Nigerian equities rally 1.23 trillion against in six days. And ASO insists on no to payroll enrollment, and that you found on page eight in this day newspaper. And the nation newspaper, I beg your pardon. And minister orders NBC to regulate online media in page 10, and 12 killed in just attacks in page five in the nation newspaper. Labor gives January 31 deadline on new wage, and PDP is Nigeria's obstacle to good governance. That's an opinion piece in the nation newspaper. And governors are more not a parallel security outfit. Big headlines across all the dailies this morning um, in the nation newspaper. And lastly in the nation this morning, the varsity recalls 363 SAC lecturers and Kaduna to continue with Elza Zaki's case. Labor gives January 31 deadline on new wage. Let me, let me have your take on that. Now, there's been a whole lot of series of debate on when should this be done? When should the money be paid? Um, should all state adopt it, even those who will know that their, their internally re re um, generated revenue is not a par with so many states? So do you think all states, as, 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 um, as said by NLC, should actually pay this minimum wage? I think it is high time the governors realize that the minimum wage has been signed into law. law. So what it means is they are compelled to obey. Of course, I understand the fact that the angle they are coming from is the fact that in the lack of funds and all that. But I do see the problem might not be lack of funds. It has to be the will to pay, the willingness to pay. You understand the political will. We've had a situation where if, the, if you look at the cost of governance and all that, yes. you know, they'll be concerned about cost of governance, yes. where they need to cut the excesses of some of the expenses of the state. We must understand that the welfare of Nigerian workers, they're very paramount. And it's a minimum wage. It's a minimum, it's a minimum wage. wage. It's a minimum wage. We, we, some of the states have started paying, like Lagos and the rest, about six states. But that's not encouraging. You have like 36 states. And I think labor has a lot to do okay. because the, the point is, last year they gave a deadline, which was December 31st. And I was expecting a showdown. You know, they vowed that they're not going to back down. But in between, we just discovered, OK, they, they have to shift it again. And yes. now it's January 34. So I think the governors, it's a challenge to them. It's a wake up call. I understand the fact that. They might not have enough revenue, but it's, it's also a wake up for them to start generating other sources of revenue. Yeah. We can't have a situation where a state would depend on what you get from federal government the fed, from, yeah. for the federal allocation Location. and all that. There's a need to diversify incomes. And they must understand that if you as a governor, you can't pay the salaries of your worker, I don't think you qualify to be one. Okay. And if you look at what uh, the national APC chairman said, you have a reg regime now who seems to, you know, be shouting change as, as his uh, slogan. So there's a need for them to understand. That was why uh, the national APC chairman gave a directive to all the APC governors that they should lead by example. So I expect them to lead by example. And because in this case, the welfare workers are very, very important. If your workers are smiling to the banks, then you'll be rest assured that you have peace in that state. Yeah, people have argued the fact that, um, well, it's, it's a known fact that Lagos State is, is, is a state in Nigeria with the most internally generated revenue, and that states like Lagos could actually pay higher than the, this, the stipulated minimum wage. What do you say to that? But yeah, the point is, we must understand that Lagos started from somewhere with an idea created by somebody or a particular governor. And now today is something. So they need to wake up to that responsibility. If Lagos had not done that years back, and now you can see the impact and the fruit. So it's, it's a wake up call, like I said, to all the governors, because it's a law. They're now obliged you know, to pay. And what I'm expecting is to find a way to negotiate, you know, so that you have a better payment system. And to talk about it, it's just a minimum wage, 50,000 yes. naira. Nigerian workers are not asking too much. If you follow the trends of this discussion, they were, in fact, labor put on the table about 50-something thousand naira, but eventually 
they agreed to 30,000 yes. My question is, these governors were part of the negotiations in the first place. Why now, when it comes to the implementation, they were part of it in the first place? So those concerns could have been raised earlier, and by now they will have found a way around it. But they must understand that since they are executive members of, of their state, they are obliged to pay their workers. So I am expecting a situation whereby they will sit down with the executive members and find ways to generate more income in order to meet up this response. Because whether they like it or not, the law says it's now a law. So they and, and the January 31 deadline, do you, do you see all states complying by January 31? If, because that uh, is very key. If, if yeah. labor is going to be taken seriously this time, because we had a deadline December 31st, and I'm hoping that you know what they plan to do in terms of protests and all that, they are serious about it. If they are serious about it, yes. I'm seeing a situation whereby the governors will take them serious this time. And I think it's just for the governor to do their own work. They have almost two weeks, whatever they need to do is a responsibility, which they just need to own on Thank to that you, responsibility. Femi. And we take a look at this day, this morning, the headlines in the Disney newspaper, investors gain 1.1 trillion naira as stock market sustains bullish performance. FAN, NCAA, tariff controllers bicker on over landing facilities, and that's in page eight on Disney newspaper. 12 killed by herdsmen in Plateau, Find that on page nine in the Disney newspaper. Military police absent as Southwest governors launch Operation Amotekun. Alfred not tantamount to state police, says fire me, and Southwest experiments with regional cooperation. Labor gives state January 31 deadline to pay minimum wage. And the general is divider in chief, and that's an opinion piece at the back page of this day newspaper. Back to the Amotekun. Um, Amotekun. 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 Let's back to <laughs> back to back to the issue. Now, many people have said that the Nigerian police needs a, a total overall and, and reformation. Um, and our policing is such a one that they live separate, they live in barracks. And that for most policing in, in the world, they live amongst the people which gives a sense, you know, of ownership. Yeah, and so you're, you're able to tell what exactly. So don't you think this is a part of our problem? Because at the end of the day, there are people will be people living, will live in the same community. And so is there need for the Nigerian police to be made to live within its own people? The, 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 the idea of staying alone in a barrack? I think we've had this cultural of everything has to be the federal government. Mm. We expect the government to fix all the problems, which is, could be ideal. Yeah. But we must understand as citizens that we have roles to play. The police cannot be everywhere. And this is an example, this scheme is an example for citizens to participate in, in, what, in, in securing the environment. Yes. The hunters, you know, the members of the vigilante groups, they are part of that community. So what it means is, they are owning that responsibility. There's what we call sense of responsibility. Yeah. Now, what it means is we'll have an area where we don't leave everything for the police. Honestly, give it to them. The police are doing their best. They are, they are doing their best to ensure they discharge their duty. But I think with the reality we have in Nigeria, there's a need for citizens to participate, what I call citizen participation. And that's an example with, South, with the Amotekun operation. And I think it's too early to say it's not going to succeed or not. I yeah. think we should give it a try. Okay. Let's see how it works. And what I'm expecting is the military apparatus to see how this can be fashioned in a way that the purpose will not be defeated. If it works, then we can. Let's, it, it's like a pilot, it's like a test to see how community policing will work. And if this works, I think it will be like a prototype for other parts of oh, the country. Okay. Uh, Masari has come out and said the Northwest states may actually copy this model. And Fire Me <laughs> clearly said that the outfit is not tantamount to state police. Yes. But you must understand that it's not a duplication. I would like to use the word duplication. It's not a duplication of the police. Yeah. But it's like a collaborative. We must accept the fact that state policing, these are not state policemen. They are only imbibing the idea of state policing, you understand, in a, in a traditional and in a communal way, yeah. so that at least you can get a better result. And I think for me, it's something we should just experiment, okay. like, like a pilot, like I said, and see how it goes. And lastly, this morning, we have the Vanguard newspaper. Fresh crisis brews in South Africa as Nigerians get eviction order. Minimum wage will cripple the 14 states after January 31, says the TUC. Obasanjo Abiodun hold closed-door meeting on Ogun development. 
and IPES, over 72% of ASU members have enrolled, says the federal government. And BUA Cement Lease, 33.9 billion now shares, becomes third largest company on the NCE. Amotekun, not an agenda to divide Nigeria, the Southwest governors, says it's not regional police but community policing. People want to sabotage our efforts, says Fire Me, while we launch Amotekun at Kerodolu. And government attack Kaduna Catholic School, Abdok 4, killed 12 in Plateau community. We've been credible, we've been credible intelligence. We've, we have credible intelligence that Iran shot down Ukrainian plane, says Canadian PM Trudeau. And lastly, in Vanguard this morning, um, that's, that's the last thing in Vanguard newspaper this morning. Now, it seems like we're beginning to have security um, insurgency and attack coming up again. At this point in time, what do you think is critical for the Buhari administration? And Plato has always been one that has suffered so much when it comes to insurgent headsmen attack. What is critical at this point in time? Okay, we, this is, it's, it's coming at a critical time. Yes. This is the beginning of the year for every organization or for every person sets a goal. So I expect the Buhari administration to start tackling this. This is January, to start tackling it. it we have a situation that if it's not being curtailed, you know, it could snowball into what, or into another crisis. Mm. You must understand that we've had a, a government which they are not proactive, you understand. They don't tackle a problem before it snowballs into another thing. So I'm expecting that this thing. And interestingly, we have a former general as a president. So it means he has the intelligence, he has the experience. All he needs to do is to call his chief security chiefs into other, and then they will strategize. Like I said, it's something we need to understand that there's a problem. There's a shortfall, there's a yes. vacuum. And the case of Plateau, that's what is taking place. It's been there for ages. And if you keep looking at all these things and create excuses, you discover that there won't be a problem. Mm -hmm. So this is not a time to look at the political affliction or to look at the tribal thing. And that's why the idea of the Amotekun is coming up to see how those things can be tackled. We've had a situation in the past where in the north you see a lot of crisis. I, I have a friend who used to live in Jos. Okay. When the last crisis happened, you know, it wasn't a funny experience, you know, he lost his children and some of his investments in just and had to relocate to somewhere in, in, in Lagos to start, you know, his, his life all over. So we don't want a situation of that and that's why I, am, I think the federal government should make, should be proactive about it. I would also like to talk about the situation in South Africa. Yes, okay, uh, quickly you know, it was like, a, Okay, it was a clash between a police officer and a Nigerian and, you know, before you knew it, the, the Nigerian allegedly, according to the president of the Nigerian you know, in South Africa, said had to stop the police officer. Yeah. I'm expecting now the, the ministry in charge of this to visit again. There's a need to visit South Africa. There's a need to do what I call orientation again because we don't have to have another round of crisis coming from that end. Yeah. Thank you very much, Femi, it's for being part of, of the press it's this morning. Privilege. And that is all we can take on Off the Press this morning. Join us again next week, same time on Off the Press. This is Plus TV Africa. I am Benny Ark. Stay with us.